Welcome everybody, Soldin of the Grin Brothers here, and it's time for another episode of Tea Time. Funny thing, even though it's not been all that long since I did a Tea Time, uh, I actually had to look up why I actually did for intros for Tea Times <laughs> uh, before starting this. Uh, hopefully the snowball's in the right position, um, it's as far back as I can get. Um, in any case, uh, today's tea is English afternoon tea with milk. Yeah, it's another repeat. Honestly, I've run out of teas to try other than making my own teas with my own, make my own tea set, effectively. Uh, but I've got so many of the rest of the teas left that I've got to, you know, drink them all before it's really worth sort of going out and getting more. I'll probably use the create my own teas for certain events. But uh, tonight, oh, I didn't feel like it. I'd, I'm recording this at midnight, so didn't feel like at midnight making my own sort of special flavoured branded tea. So... Any case, today we're t discussing an important topic, the UK election results. Wait a minute, I don't do politics on this channel. I remember specifically saying I would only focus this on being a game only channel. Ha, ja. Well, I guess we should talk about Splatoon then, because there was a Splatoon Nintendo Direct, or a Nintendo Direct about Splatoon. Not sure why I need to repeat that, but yeah, yeah, but Nintendo Direct focusing on Splatoon, Ed. And Splatoon being in why uh, listed as my second most looked forward to game of this very year, uh, I decided to watch it. And because of the Nintendo Direct, and as I've d tried to do with previous Nintendo Directs, I'm going to do a tea time about it. I've actually tried to prepare a bit of paper here. A list. Unfortunately, the original list of which I did as I watched the Nintendo Direct ended up being like seven small bits of paper and in the end when trying to get all in a more cohesive list I decided oh, I'll just read the rest the last bits off the scraps of paper I've got um, it's actually a surprising long list so okay let's talk about the Splatoon Direct aka Squid Research Lab Report yeah Splatoon sort of creators and such as well as on their uh, Tumblr I can't I don't know the name of the Tumblr but they've Got a Splatoon, official Splatoon Tumblr have gone on with this, gone off with this whole sort of scientist motif, you know, that they've been researching the inklings or as they just call it squids. And it's a pretty cool sort of way of sort of presenting news and information about the game. Um, yeah, no, not sure what's got stuck in my throat there. <laughs> uh, general overview of the game. Oh, sorry, I was just reading off the list just straight off there. No, uh, the, the direct start off with a general overview of the game, just, you know, telling you how things work and all. I'm uh, not going to go over all that because, again, as I said, there's a lot of stuff here. Uh, some new details that emerged was customization, as in more so, you know, being able to customize your character itself, not just their clothes. Um, you can customize your inkling's eyes and their skin tone, and of course, select their gender, I believe. Um, however, their hair, which is also the tentacles, uh, don't change, you know, you can't choose their colours, uh, because their colours depend on what team you're on. Um, which makes sense, I mean, you're not always going to be on the same team, and so your hair slash tentacles will change depending on the team, because that's to represent what team you're on, and also changes what ink you're using. The stages were revealed, and the way the stages work on the online, because I believe all five of the stages that they showed off for the start of things, uh, can be played in the Battle Dojo, uh, so you can sort of test out all the locations and such. Um, when you go online, only two of the stages are able to be picked. You can only play on two of the stages. But those stages change every four hours. I'm not sure why this was done. I'm assuming it's something to do with, like, server balance issues. You know, so they don't have to look after multiple stages at once or something like that. But I'm okay with it. You know, change once every four hours, pretty good. And it, it get, allows people to sort of, like, plan out what sort of, uh, I guess... Um, be ready for certain stages based and select their weapons based on it. The stages include Urchin Underpass, which my only keynote I got from that was Divided by Many Walls. Uh, Salt Spray Rick has a mixture of high and low points to it. A Anakin, I have the high ground! I think that's how the quote goes. I can't remember it. I barely watched Star Wars. Or really care too much about it, so I'm not sure why I'm trying to quote Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Black Belly Skate Park, large open areas. Uh, I believe centre is supposed to be a strong point, mostly because it's such a large open area that everything ends up connecting to the centre anyway. So, uh, Walleye Warehouse, where there are many obstacles, hence it being a warehouse. So, you know, this is your cover base shooter right here, folks. And a Rowan, a Rowana, a Rowana Mall. 
of which I made no keynote because trying to make keynotes while I'm watching the Nintendo Direct is incredibly hard. Um, so I only managed to get some things down. The main hub area, Incopolis, um, is literally the only thing I quote on that. I'll talk more about Incopolis in a sec because there's some pretty cool things about sort of people there and such. But in Splatoon, there are three main weapon types for your standard weapon. The shooter, charger and roller. Uh, sure is your standard gun. Charger is usually guns which charge a bit. This also includes stuff like the sniper rifle. And the roller is your melee weapon, basically. I'm probably going to be a, ro a roller guy. <coughs> Melee's always been more of a preferred suit for me. Though it will also depend on what sub-weapons and special weapons are also uh, available for the roller types. Because you buy, you get, you get, choose your weapons based on a set of three rather than individually pick and match. Um... The sub and special weapons are very diverse. They've, I, I had the feeling before that they were more that they were also focused on like KOing or ink coverage potential. You know, there was stuff like bombs, the ink zooka, um, but they ended up reveal a lot of sort of interesting things like ink mine, which you can sort of like lay in the, your own ink and no one will be able to see it. You got stuff like the point sensor um, and squad beacon. And you know, like point sensor will be able to show you when enemies appear in a certain area, and squad beacon will be able to have a rally point for all your teammates. And it, it's pretty awesome uh, how diverse the sub-weapons and heavy and super weapons all are. And it gives a, you know, much more uniqueness to it than just, you know, this weapon will be highly effective at destroying foes. But, you know, it, it's all used for different sort of strategies and it's pretty cool. Um, in Incopolis, you can find other players, as you'd expect. But when talking to said players, you can check out their gear, which is pretty cool. But even cooler is that you can then place orders for that gear so that those gears will appear in the shops. And so you can go then purchase said gear based off what you sort of saw that person had. Which I think is a pretty darn awesome feature. Um, speaking of Incopolis, there's a new character introduced called Spike. Um, and basically, all the gears that you equip, the clothes, the hats, the shoes... They all have abilities attached to them. I um, believe you can you can unlock more abilities. Some of them have like more than one ability. You can unlock more. But I believe you can only select certain abilities. Because I believe you can only have four abilities active in a match per once. But I'm not 100% sure on this. You may want to sort of clarify that. Um, but Spike is the ability to give your ability more ability. Your, sorry, your gear more ability slots. And this is done so the while you can unlock said sort of gear and such... It's done so that you can attach your favorite abilities to your favorite gear. So it doesn't matter what clothes you're wearing in, in, to, in the end because you can attach your favorite abilities to them. This will take some time and effort though because Spike accepts trades in these things called Super Sea Snails. Uh, more on that in a bit. Uh, wow, the time's passing quick. Story Mode. Story Mode looks awesome. Sort of brilliant sort of missions and enemies. It has boss battles and you can find like uh, power eggs during the stage to... Custom art, uh, sort of power up your single stage specific gear and weapons, you know, how strong your bombs, how strong your standard gun, and all that, which is pretty cool. And at each level, there's these things called Sunken Scrolls, which uh, reveal lore and history of the game, and I'll just, you know, pretty little pictures and such. And there's one in every single stage, so collectors, hey, you want a 100% complete Splatoon? Go out then, get all these Sunken Scrolls. Now I have to move on to the scraps of paper, because I got tired of trying to write it all down. Let me take a bit, sip of my tea. Well, I should add at this note, the afternoon tea that I am having, I'm having with milk. Yeah. Because I usually say when I have tea with milk, so yeah. Moving on, though. Uh, Battle Dojo. Um, stuff in app. Uh, <laughs> okay, this, yeah, again, this is why I uh, made the other list. Um, ranked Bows. Ah, that's what I remember. Um, oh, wait, this is all the stuff I've already covered before. Uh, ah, yes, yes. Um... I believe within the ranked battles, yes. In ranked battles, there's more than sort of just the uh, sort of uh, turf war and uh, what was it? Splat, no, Splat Zone. Well, Splat Zone is like a king of a hill type thing. But there'll later on be free updates to include other stuff. More so than just new stages and weapons, which apparently will be every few weeks and new gear uh, air stuff, new ranked battles will also be available, such as tower control where the person described it as like a reverse tug of war. But basically, you take control of an area, think of it like a flag, 
And that area starts, uh, but in this case it's a tower, and that tower starts moving towards the enemy's base, so long as you're on it and got hold of it. This makes you the target for every enemy trying to destroy you and then take control of it and move to your base. But when you get to the enemy's base, it's like a bomb, you win when it beats them. Um, and apparently there's another update, there's another thing in the works called Rainmaker. Um, not an idea on that yet. Um, there's a major update planned for August and more modes make and later on they'll give you the ability to make your own teams in eight player friend only matches. That must have been something I missed off one of these because I forgot to comment the one online. Um, you can find your friends and join your friends sort of game. However, you can't pick your teams uh, at the moment from the start. You'll be able to make your own teams even up to eight player friend only matches later on uh, when they update that. But from the start, you won't be able to. But you can join a friend's match um, and who's in whose team is randomly shuffled. And after each match, it's randomly shuffled repeatedly. So the, you're never always on the same team. As I say, your uh, greatest ally one day will become your greatest rival the next day. Sort of thing. Well, not day, as in literally between matches. So, <laughs> um, some other cool things were uh, the arcade machine. Well, basically, if you're waiting too long for a match, you can play these arcade games, which is pretty cool. You can also play them out of side of matches. You can also unlock more arcade games through completing every single amiibo challenge. Admittedly, you need the inkling amiibos for it, but it's a nice little bonus. I think they should probably should have had the arcade things outside of the inklings amiibos. Uh, but at the same time, it's such a small extra that I don't think it's going to matter too much. It affects less of the core game than actually being able to get the uh, amiibo specific equipment and such. So, well, the inkling specific equipment. So, actually, it's probably better off uh, having the arcade thing. Um... Uh, so yeah, um, <laughs> uh, one really cool thing I like is Splatfest, where it kind of reminds me of Sunset Overdrive in a way, sort of Sunset Overdrive's Chaos uh, sort of squad and their Sunset TV. Uh, Splatfest is basically this sort of little festival that will occur every now and again. It will provide news updates through their two uh, squid sister pop stars, Callie and Mary, who are terrifying. Well, Rafi described Mary as looking dead inside, and Callie just really, really, really creeps me out. Um, in any case, uh, they provide news updates and information on that, which is all pretty cool. Um, but they also provide a vote, uh, similar to Sunset TV, sort of having their vote of, like, what equipment you want. Uh, in Splatfest, they'll say, which you prefer, cats or dogs? And when you say, sort of, whether you prefer cats or dogs, you then put on a team for that thing. And so you get to participate in Splatfest specific matches, which whichever team uh, has the most wins, well, that team wins. And everyone who is a part of that team gets some super sea, uh, sea snails, which, of course, you then give over, hand over to Spike for the ability thing. I think this is pretty cool. I really liked how Sunset Overdrive did it with uh, Sunset TV and Chaos Squad and such. And I'm glad to see the Sunset Overdrive is uh, utilizing this, uh, this sort of thing. Apparently the first of these Splatfests will take place very soon on June 27th, uh, which is pretty cool. So, uh, first month after its release, um, which is um, apparently the vote's going to be Team Rock or Pop. I'm more of a rock person, so that's where I'll be. And one last thing. Splatoon will be having a global test fire, a Splatoon demo, a demo of the online mode. And it'll be taking place, well, at the time I'm recording this and the time I'm uploading, today. In fact, I'll try and stay up all night to compete in the Saturday, in uh, all three of them, really. Um, because for the UK, it's starting at 4am um, today. Um, and I may t a, uh, make another video on uh, what I think of Splatoon after I've tried out these demos. Uh, hopefully, if I can get into one, it may have a lot of online traffic. I think they're doing it this way to like stress test to make sure the servers can handle the flow. It'll meet demand or imp and improve it if there's more demand than expected. In any case, that was the Splatoon Direct. I loved watching it. There's a lot of information and I'm really looking forward to this game. Uh, feel free to share your thoughts below because I'd be l I'd love to hear them and I'd love to be a discuss with other people about Splatoon. Uh, for now then, I hope you enjoy this tea time and cheerio!